everyone. I'm April and this is The Tangled Cat, episode number two of The Tangled Cat Speaks. If this is your first time joining me, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you've been here before, thank you for coming back and I really, really appreciate being able to share what I love with you. Um, I'm going to get right into it, talk about some knitting, some crocheting, maybe a little bit of book action going on in there. Um, so let's go with project number one, an in-progress project or what we like to call whips, works in progress, whips. Uh, and I don't know why when I hear that, when I hear somebody else say, oh, I'm going to pull out my whip, I think of that song, now watch me whip and watch me nay nay. I don't know why. I know, silly. Anyway, here's, here's my doily that I mentioned last time. I'm knitting this in wool on Knit Picks Shadow Tonal Lace Weight Yarn. And this is the colorway Grasshopper. It's got very slight variations of the green, different tones of the same green throughout it. It gives the project a little bit of a depth to it. It's kind of hard to see on camera. But I'm gonna come up close just a little bit so maybe you can see the stitches the crocheted stitches. Very, very pretty. It's called Oriental Fantasy, and this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's crocheted on a very, very super tiny hook. It's a 2.0 millimeter. Very small, and I definitely need my readers when I work on this baby. Um, but it's coming out so pretty and I'm really, really loving it. And it looks like I'm getting really close to the 10 inch diameter mark. I may end up finishing this a lot sooner than what the pattern calls for so that I can get it to fit into a 10 inch metal hoop and make it into a hanging that kind of looks like a dream catcher. And mount this up hang it somewhere it's just i think it'll just be something really interesting for the home speaking of for the home i did mention that this is for my group that i'm part of in ravelry called delicious death and we're reading um for january 2018 we're reading by the pricking of my thumbs agatha christie i love her so much i'm a total fan um so this is the book by the pricking of my thumbs and our moderator for this month's read along is um, suggesting patterns that have something to do with the home and so doilies are definitely in that category so I'm very excited I can finally get this done it was a project that I didn't quite get finished in December so very exciting um, I need to get my hoop out so that I can actually measure and try to get that mounted on almost done hopefully it'll be a finished object or an fo like we like to say um next time you see me so there is crochet project um i gotta put this needle away safely because it's so tiny i don't want it to get lost or i don't want to accidentally like step on it or sit on it or something very dangerous <laughs> um since i have it in my hand i have another book that i'm reading um, it's by Betty, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, I believe it's Hetman, um, and it is a series, a crochet mystery series, um, it's a cozy series, it's a murder mystery, but it's light, it's a murder light, you know, they don't, it's not real gory, um, just kind of funny, kind of silly, it's usually an amateur sleuth, and um, this one is based on crochet. It even has cute little patterns um, in the back, and sometimes they have recipes like for cookies or whatnot, whatever happens to be in the book. Um, so this one's called Seems Like Murder. Very cute, very fun. Um, gosh, I think this is like number nine or ten in the series. I'm not positive on which number, but I just think it's such a cute little series, and I adore it so much and murder mysteries are my theme all because of Mrs. Christie. Love it, love it, love it. Dame Agatha rocks. Love her so much. I actually named my cat after her. 
I don't know if she'll, you'll see her anytime soon. She likes to perch up here from time to time. Um, but she's sleeping right now. She's, she's living the life, taking naps all day long. Uh, um, so let's get into a knitted project. I'm sure that some of you have a lot of stash and have a lot of leftovers. And I know that if you're on Ravelry, you've probably seen it. There's different versions of it. Some people call it a memory blanket. The particular pattern that I'm using is called, I have notes, I have notes this time. This particular pattern is called Knitted Patchwork Recipe. And it's another free um, thing from Ravelry. And it is by Martine Ellis. It's the same idea as what people are calling the memory blanket. I think that the it might be a little bit different in the size of the squares and the way that the decreases are made, but it's the same idea. And it's to use up all your little leftover balls, tiny little balls, and just knit them together into this, what will eventually be an actual human size blanket. Right now, it may work for a Barbie bed, I don't know. But I've got so many different yarns in here and um this is fingering weight i have yarns on here that i have had just i can't get rid of the bits they're there little tiny things that i had no idea what to do with until i saw one of these blankets and i thought oh i'm never gonna get something like that done and no i probably won't not for a very long time i mean i've been working on this since june little by little when i feel the need i'll add a square or two so this is definitely going to take me a while um, but it's got so many different colors and textures, um, lights and darks, semi-solids, variegated, just everything you can imagine. Some people actually like to try to plan out what their squares are doing, you know, maybe like a rainbow, a rainbow effect or light to dark. That's too much for me, way too much. I have a little ball. I'm going to throw it on there. I don't care what the color is so much. And this thing here, nice little mug, is full of these tiny little balls that I'm talking about. Things that I I can't seem to throw away. And why would you? I paid for these things and they're so pretty and kind of looks like a jug of gumballs. Um, these are just a few. I've got so many. And then some places that I buy yarn from online when they send what I ordered They'll send sometimes little samples of other yarn bases in their shops. And so there I have enough to add a square. And this particular one, one of my favorite shops is Pandia's Jewels. This one is, the color is called Mystic Orb. And this is on her shimmer base. Oh, this is so pretty. I have to show this off lots of pretty little shades of purple so I get these from time to time this is one that's a little gray with some teals and blues and I think that one what was that one called this is relative dimension and I got knit all the things this is a cute colorway knit all the things is what she called it and it's pinks little bits of oranges very pretty, but they're so tiny. I mean, you couldn't really make anything out of this. I don't even think that this is enough for toes and heels on a sock, but it works great in something like this. And it's just, I love how rustic this looks. Like you would see it in, an, in a log cabin just thrown over an old bed, like a wooden frame bed or something. Um, I'm very excited. I I love looking at this. And even in some some of the squares, you can see I ran out of one yarn and added another one right at the end. And what's cool about this blanket is that each square is knitted on to the other one. It's not there's no sewing. I'm literally picking up stitches and just continuing on as I go. Um best best thing now what I, I really need to get better at is the ends you can see that I started doing better in 
tucking in the end as I go. I still have a few at the beginning that I need to go back and tuck in, but now I've learned how to tuck in as I go so that there isn't thousands upon thousands of ends for me to tuck in in the future. Um, that's that. That is something that's going to be ongoing and who knows when I'm going to get this thing done. And I'm always growing my stash. I'm trying really, really hard to be good. Mm, but just these three. Just these three minis. Look, they're so beautiful. I mean, how do you say no? How do you say, um, no, I don't want that. It's not possible. It is so hard. And Miss Julia of Pandia's Jewels. Oh my goodness, she makes some beautiful stuff. And ah, must buy it all. I'm trying really hard. Like I said, 2018 is trying to be the, the year of not buying anything new. Oh my gosh. It, that, it's even painful to say that. But I'm going to try. Okay. Now, speaking of that, I'm not buying anything new in 2018. But I did plan for the fact that I was going to have new yarn withdrawals. Um, I joined a yarn club. This is my first actual yarn club, like a subscription. And what it entails is I've already made payment and throughout 2018, I'm going to get new yarn. And this particular club, it's all going to be a surprise. Um, uh, I got the information on this club here. It's by Indie Untangled. That's the, the group that I, the, who's hosting this yarn club. And it's called Where We Knit Yarn Club, 2018 version. Um, so what I paid for is four, one, two, three, four, four um, sets coming out every few months throughout 2018. Um, there's going to, for each, for each um, shipment that I get, I'm gonna get a skein of yarn Skein, skein, I always say that wrong. I think it's skein. Um, a skein of yarn and a corresponding PDF of a pattern. Now the yarn dyer and the pattern designer are were picked to work together to create these two things to work together. And they base it on where they live. Um, so in February, I'm going to get a shipment, another one in May, another one in August, and then another one in November. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to still get stuff even though it's already been paid for back in, gosh, I think I ordered it in November is when they started getting signups for this thing. Um, in February, they said that I'm going to get something from Hugh Loco. Wonderful, wonderful yarn dyer. Super cute girl. Makes amazing, amazing colorways. I've got a few of her things. Um, and the yarn, I'm sorry, the pattern designer that is with her is called Sweater Freak Knits. So I've never knit any of her patterns and I, I did look to see what she made, has made in the past to see if I am going to like it. And I'm very excited. I think that February is going to be very, very exciting. Um, May is going to be Pandia's Jewels. She's the one who... I've, I've got a lot of her stuff already, so I'm super excited to see what she came up with based on where she lives, the yarn colorways, the yarn colorway that she's going to come up with, and she's paired with Cece Allman. Now, her, I've got quite a few of her patterns, and I've knit a couple pairs of socks that I got from her, and I've got definitely got another shawl that I'm really, really dying to make, her coffee date shawl. Oh, I'm so excited. I still have it. I have the yarn. It, have it printed out. It's in a in a bag, just ready and waiting for me to get busy on it. But so the fact that Pandia's Jewels and CC Almond are together in May, I'm gonna get this surprise pattern and colorway from those two. I am super super excited. Um, August is Little Fox Yarn. I don't know anything about this particular dyer, and she's paired with or they. I don't know if it's he or she. They're paired with Caitlin Hunter for the pattern. 
Um, I don't know really a whole lot about them. Um, so that's going to be like a super pure, honest to goodness surprise for me. And I am very, very excited. That's in August. In November, I'm getting a colorway from Dark Harbor Yarns. And again, I don't know that that particular dyer, but it's so exciting. It's going to be just, I'm going to open this package and I'm going to be like, ah, yay. So, um, and they pair Dark Harbor Yarns, Dark Harbor Yarns with Amy Vandalar pattern designer. And I definitely know her. I haven't knit any of her things yet, but I've got her in my queue for her beeswax hat. Oh, it is so pretty. I got this thing for bees lately, and her hat is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I've already got yarn set aside for that, too. So this is going to be a year of no buying new yarn for myself, but I'm still getting yarn because I've, <laughs> I planned ahead to make sure. Um, so I'm not spending any money in 2018 for yarn. But I will be getting new stuff, and I am so going to share those with you. We're going to just take this adventure together. And again, that was the Indie Untangled Where We Knit Yarn Club 2018. Um, the yarn dyers and the patterns designers, like I said, are going to be basing their work on where they live. And that's super exciting to me. So you get to see what they're inspired by on an everyday basis. Very, very cool. Fun, fun, fun. So I mentioned that one of the colorways in that yarn club is from um, a yarn dyer called Hugh Loco. Um, she's based out of Colorado. And I just recently found her. I stumbled upon her somehow and I fell in love. And then she's also got a YouTube channel here. Um, again, called Hugh Loco, H-U-E. L-O-C-O and super cute. She is so adorable. Um, I just binge watched all her her YouTube videos and I want more. I want more from her. I love her. She's so cute. And again, I got a little crazy, um, a little excited about some of the things that she was dying. And I got up on her website and I ordered a few things in there over there in my closet. Ooh, that pretty, pretty closet full of yummy, yummy, beauty, beautiful stuff. Beautiful. So I keep harping on the fact that I'm not buying any new yarn in 2018. December 30th. Okay, my birthday is December 31st. December 30th, I bought myself a birthday present. And it came in and the this is yarn from Hugh Loco and I haven't seen it I know what it is obviously I ordered it it's not a mystery but I haven't seen it in person um so excuse the crinkling I'm gonna start cutting this and opening it up very 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 carefully um what I ordered is a collection it's part of a collection that she did um, called the Backyard Chicken Collection, I think it's called. Backyard, I, I should look at my notes more often. Yeah, Backyard Chicken Collection. And what she did was she based her colorways on different breeds of chicken. Chicken? Chickens? <laughs> um, she had several, and I ordered three different sets um so it's a full skein of skein one of these days i'm going to get that right a full skein of a main color and two minis um so presumably to make a pair of socks based on this chicken and so i ordered three and i'm going to keep saying chicken because i like the word chicken um I don't have the pictures of what the actual chickens look like, but I'm going to describe them to you. And you can see the pictures that she got the inspiration from side by side on her website. Picture, side by side pictures of the yarn that she dyed and the chickens that she was inspired by. Oh my gosh, she did such a good job getting them to match. So, so, so pretty. It's, it's magical and 
I I have never been a farm girl or lived out in the country. Very much not an outdoorsy kind of person. I think that if a chicken were to be, a live chicken were to be around me, I would be scared out of my wits because whenever I've seen them on TV or whatever, they're squawking around and, oh, they would scare me. They'd just be fluttering around and like, no, no. But her view of these chickens as translated into yarn is I'm sold totally sold so here we go I got the, the main package open and I'm sorry for all this crinkling and noise oh my god oh my goodness gracious oh wait till you see this so I'm gonna try to remember get the names straight let me open this package I'm just gonna say this real quick this is the front and again you can see barnyard chicken collection by Hugh Loco. Um, here we go. Here we go. Here's the the cutting of the package. Ooh, I almost don't want to take it out of the package because I don't want it to not look this pristine. But it's okay. I'm, I'm gonna be good. So this particular colorway, she called Buff. Buff Orpington, I think is how you say it. And it's this beautiful, oh my God, look at how she did that. Oranges and tans and rust, orange, red oranges. It looks like some black speckles in there. Oh, it's so pretty, very fall looking. And then here's a more solid coordinating color. It looks just slightly brighter it looks like and it doesn't appear to have speckles I don't want to take it out of the little sleeve I want it to stay nice until I actually use them um, and then here's the pink which is this was the body of the chicken and this is the little mohawk thingy I have no idea what that's called <laughs> on the top of the chicken's head that's where the pink comes from and like I said, if you were to just look at this, you wouldn't think, oh, that's a buff Orpington chicken. But if you see her picture side by side to the chicken, you're like, oh, yes, that's exactly it. Perfect representation. Amazing. Super, super, super excited. Oranges aren't my main color. I'm more of cool colors, you know, greens, purples, um, blues, grays. But lately, I've been on a, an orange kick, and I've got tons of it. So I need to get get knitting on some of these things. Super excited. <laughs> okay. Reveal number two. Oh, and you know what? I should tell you what base she's got this on. This is her Phyllis sock. 75% um, merino and 25% nylon. It's a 100 gram skein and the two minis are 20 grams each. Um, super, super excited. I can definitely make a pair of socks and have some left over. Uh, I just may do some chicken shawls. Who knows? Oh my God, this one is so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Okay, here we go. So this is Look at that, the coordinating red. Oh, this is her light Sussex chicken colorway. And again, look on her website for the side-by-side -side picture of the actual chicken. Speckled um, white, gray, and black chicken. Um, and here's the coordinating black. And then the little, I think it's the under thing. I can't remember if it's that or the... Do chickens have that or is that turkeys? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, God, I am so not a farm girl. But this is the red that goes with it. I'm pretty sure it's this thing. Um, but it's so pretty. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Light Sussex chicken shawl. I just, I can't. I can't. Woo. Now, this one, everyone has a favorite color. Me, 
like everyone else, I have a favorite color, but I, and I'm pretty sure everybody does as well, but has a color that drives them crazy in, in not always a good way. And um, for me, that color is yellow. I hear, I'm going to move this so it's not so crinkly. Um, I hear people say how yellow is so peaceful for them. It's just a happy, peaceful color. And to, it's yellow is one of those. It depends on the shade of yellow. Most yellows for me, I'm just like, oh, no, no, thank you. There is um, one or two shades of yellow that are quite lemony that that I can stand that I really like. Um, but it's hard to find that particular shade of yellow. But Huloco did it. They made a chicken yarn with the exact yellow that I like. And so I had to get it. So here it is. This is, no, it's on this side. The Bard Rock, Rock? Bard Rock colorway. It's a pretty chicken, and I think instead of doing the little head thingy, this is the color of the feet, the chicken feet. Yay! This particular one has a semi-solid gray, and then the the main skein has like a dove gray, and then some lighter black and gray speckles, and then some more of that yellow mixed in. Ooh! See, this is a beautiful yellow. This is very lemony and I like it. Now I wouldn't make an entire shawl or sweater out of it, but as an accent, it's very pretty. Now I've seen cars this color, not a fan, but as an accent color, I think it's pretty. Um, I'm super happy with this. Super, super excited. I need to get off of dissing yellow because it's actually not as bad as I say it is and I'm pretty sure that I'm coming around and my my tastes are changing and it's probably because of dyers like Hugh Loco who are just making dreams come true and changing the world through color and I'm super excited about that so yay I got my three chicken yarn kits sets and I'm very very happy uh, so that's kind of a taste for me to see what she's gonna come up with in the February yarn club that I joined um, we'll see what what she does she's I obviously already love her work so I'm super excited to see what she comes up with and how she pairs that with um, sweater freak knits pattern Ooh, super excited okay I'm going to stop gushing about that because you're probably like, shut up. Not really. Not really. We all love it. We all love to look and to squish and look some more. And ooh. I mean, that's why we do it, right? The colors, they draw us in and then the projects just happen. So super exciting. And very, very fun. And I'm thrilled. Super thrilled. Um, I didn't get a whole lot done on my sock for Daniel. I'm still about where I was. There's that pretty teal. So I'm still about in the same place. Um, I really need to get these done. I would like to make more socks. I just, I'm craving socks right now. I was on a couple of years of nothing but shawls. Um, and now I'm shifting over and all I want, all I can think about right now are socks. And it's so exciting. I just got some new knitting needles. I, if you can't tell, I prefer knitting on DPNs. These are six inch nickel plated DPNs and these are from Knit Picks. Um, I really like them. Um, there's, there's nothing super fancy about them. Um, um, they're just nickel plated six inch double pointed needles. I tried knitting with magic loop or with two um, short circulars. I I can do it. I just don't care for it as much. It, it seems too fiddly for me. And I'm assuming that that's because I learned how to knit in the round on DPNs. 
um, you know, it's, it's comfort. It's a comfort zone for me. I'm there. I know how to do it. It's mindless almost. And I feel like magic loop is a little too fiddly for me, but I know people who just love it. And I do like that on magic loop, you can do two at a time, but I don't love that enough to want to do magic loop. But I do get second sock syndrome. Oh, that is a thing, people. Second sock syndrome. You know, I make a shawl. I get to the end and I'm done. I have a shawl or I have a hat or a scarf. Socks and gloves. It, you have to do the same exact thing twice. I am more of a start all the things now kind of person. I get startitis all the time. It is not even funny how many things I've got started in that closet. And um, having to make the same thing a second time is uh, like the second one, I'm just like, okay, been there, done that. I don't want to do it again. But I can't walk around with one sock because, you know, my other foot will freeze and that's not cute. So... <laughs> Second sock syndrome is a thing. We need to we need to start a, something to stop second sock syndrome. Um, what I really want to do is get another set of DPNs so I can knit, you know, a certain length on this sock and then do the same thing on the other sock and just switch back and forth. Because, like, I just can't get into the magic loop thing. It just seems super fiddly for me. So, I don't know. We'll see if I ever decide to make get myself some more needles and do two at a time that way. I like short row heels the best. And I actually do. I, but I love the fit of a uh, gusset and heel flap better. Um... I just don't like picking up the stitches after you finish the heel flap. I don't know why that that is just not pleasant for me. I don't know. Um, so I do, I tend to do the short row heel just because it's easy. But the heel flap, I think, looks better and feels better, I think. Um, a lot of people have done the fish kiss lips heel or fish lips kiss you. <laughs> um, I've never done that yet. That is actually one I haven't tried and I really want to. Who knows, maybe next month I will try that and it'll be something new. Speaking of something new or challenging myself, um, Ravelry, the group, my group Delicious Death that I read Agatha Christie books with, is joining um, the Ravelenics on Ravelry and what the Ravel Ravelenix is, is we get um, a group of people and we have a team, so to speak, and we knit along with the Olympics. And everybody casts on around the world um, on the same at the same time that the Olympics are actually started. And so it's it's kind of cool to know that I'm starting my project at the same time as someone over in Finland or Germany or Australia and we're all making these projects starting at the exact same time. Um, some people, and I, I can't even pronounce the name of where the Olympics are going to be this year, but it's this, this year is in February and I'm going to, I'm challenging myself to do something brioche. I've never done brioche my best friend made has made a couple of things with it and it's so pretty and I don't know why I'm afraid of that technique I have no clue I've been knitting for a long time and for some reason ugh, for some reason brioche scares me so I'm gonna do it I'm gonna challenge myself to do brioche and I may make another pair of socks using the fish lips kiss heel um 
as another challenge to myself. So I, I, when I participate in these Ravelinics, I'm actually pushing myself. That's the whole point of the Ravelinics games is you find something to push yourself. Some people push themselves with new techniques. Some people push themselves with by knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting miles and miles and miles of yarn into these projects. It's Sometimes it's one huge project. Sometimes it's just a whole bunch of little projects, but they just knit, knit, knit. That's their challenge. Um, other people challenge them themselves in different ways. Um, and it's just fun. It's just a fun little thing. And your particular team's moderator will, um, at the end of it, will give out little medals or badges for, for your accomplishments. And it's just cute. It's fun. Um, everybody is, it's just, we're cheerleaders for each other. and We just have a good time. And I love Ravelry because I can just talk to these people from other countries and we're we're loving the same things and we're bonded by this crafting crazy crafting that we do it, it's just so fun i love that you know somebody will post something in the message boards and it's in french i can't read french but google translate helps me and i go and my translate it come back and I'm like oh I'm having a conversation in French and it's so exciting uh, I love it I have so much fun so Ravelenics is one of those things where people come together in their in their little groups and their little teams and we're just cheering each other on with our projects and it's so fun so that's exciting that's what I'm going to get into um, that's going to be coming up I believe in February sometime is when we're all going to have the mass casting on so excited cast on is the term if you're not a knitter um casting is casting on is the term for how you begin your project um super excited it's fun 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 coming up um one other thing that i wanted to talk about is what i'm wearing i think that's going to be something that i'm going to try to incorporate in all my episodes is something that i've finished whether it's a recent fo finished object or it's something that i've done in the past since i'm new here um i think it'll be fun to show you some of the things that i've worked on in the past uh, just to show you my kind of where my tastes lie um so we're going to start today in this episode we're going to talk about this thing i love this the it's a shawl, it's a triangular shawl, and it is made out of a sport weight yarn. It's 100% merino, I believe. It is Malabrigo Arroyo yarn. And the two colors that I have in here are, the gray is called Plomo, and it's it almost looks a little purpley. And then the other color is a real pretty multi-toned green that is called Chircus or Chircus, Chircus. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but this is a pattern that I designed and I recently put it up onto Ravelry. But it's a triangular shawl and I don't know how much you can see. And whew, it's huge. It's so huge very huge wingspan um it's on my Ravelry page um if you'd like to look at that um but i designed this based on and there's five designs that i did this with i based them on a, a singer and songwriter um his group is called avriel and the sequoias and the main guy in the group is called avi kaplan um, it's a, I guess kind of like folk music is what, what category that would fit into. And it's just the most beautiful music. I love it so much. Um, and I mean, he, there's five songs on his EP and I made patterns for each and every song. His music inspired me very much to create and I really got into designing because of his music 
and this one was one of them. This is the song that this one was inspired by. It was called Sage and Stone. So that's where I get the colors from, um, Sage and Stone. And this here is supposed to be a, a representation of arrowheads, which is what he makes reference to in the song. And then here I wanted, he also talks about eagles in the song. And I was hoping that <laughs> this pretty lace at the edge would be representative of eagle wings. And, and even the shape itself, it's kind of hard to show it here, but it's it resembles wings. Um, love this. And I wear it so much. And green and gray happen to be my top two colors. So it was perfect. Um, so that was what I was wearing today. And I usually wear it how I had it on over my shoulders. Um, but you know, a lot of people like wearing their shawls front ways, you know, and just kind of crossing the, the ends over like that and just kind of tucking that in. And then it'll be sort of down in the front. Let me tilt this down just a little bit, but it'll, you know, just kind of hang there in the front. Very cool. And I just messed up my camera angle. <laughs> oh, goodness. So that's what I was wearing Thank today. Thank you for joining me. That's about all I have right now. Um, hopefully I will see you all again soon. And happy knitting if you're a knitter. Happy crocheting if you're a crocheter. Thank you for coming by. Love you.